All right, let's bring on now a, 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 a lady who is just simply fantastic, Victoria Robinson. She's the founder of Reassemble. She's got a great story, great passion. Uh, Victoria, good morning. There you are. Good morning, Joe. <laughs> so good to see you and finally meet you. I know. It's been a long time. We've been talking on social media, and it's nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. Uh, I got to tell you what, my, my Facebook and social media is always filled with your stories, your great passion. Tell us what Reassemble is and your mission and what you're on right now. Well, um, over 30 years ago, Joe, is, what, is how it started. I unfortunately believed the lie that abortion couldn't affect my life in any way. When I chose abortion, I was a single mother with two little girls, and I believed that uh, that this was the best choice and then found out very quickly that it wasn't. It was a choice that almost destroyed my life. And so it took about 10 years for me to finally ask for help. And when I did ask for help, a pregnancy center that was local where I lived offered me after abortion recovery. I didn't even know this, this kind of help existed. I just came to the resolve that for the rest of my life, I was going to have to live with the guilt and the shame and the self condemnation and all of the things that come from choosing abortion forever because I'm the one who made that choice. So I was pleasantly surprised. My life was completely transformed by going through after abortion recovery myself. And so what I said to those facilitators that helped me was teach me how to do this too because everyone needs to be able to have access to this kind of help. So now here it is two decades later, over two decades later, that I have been conducting retreats and one-on-one -on -one counseling and even Zoom group sessions for people who've had abortions. I, I like this. You sent me this note. I'm going to read it correctly. You started Reassemble to help counsel and bring healing to women and men who may yes. be dealing with the aftermath of their abortion. Why is it important, Victoria, to involve men in this? I'm so glad you brought that up, Joe. One of the things that we have done as a society is basically said to men, sit down, shut up. It's not your body. You don't have any say in what she chooses to do. And a scientific fact for everyone, if you're paying attention, is that it's not her body either. And that child has two parents. And the way that it came about, Joe, is when I... Up until the time I wrote my book, They Lied to Us, which is stories from women who've chosen abortion, I had this hatred that had built in me towards men about abortion because I believed the lies. It's their fault. They make women do it. They're, they're sleeping around, getting them pregnant, and then they don't have any kind of re repercussions from it. Well, when my book came out, I called the father of my child that we decided to abort and that he did pressure me to do. And when I called him expecting him to say, so big deal, why did you even call me? It had been over a decade since we spoke. And when he heard my voice and all I said was, hey, it's me, he began to weep. And he cried so hard, Joe, I couldn't even understand what he was saying. And when he finally could talk, he said, I've been waiting for this call for over 10 years to beg you for forgiveness for what I made you do. It's haunted me all these years and I've been in therapy for eight years dealing with it. Can you wow. ever forgive me? He said, I should have protected you and our child and I failed you both. In that moment, Joe, I realized a couple things. One, oh, whoa, you know, me, this uh, little Christian girl who thought she was doing so well in forgiving people for ha that had wronged me, I had not forgiven him fully. And in that moment, I. It came full circle for me, my healing. I realized I need to let that go. And I realized how much he was hurting, which caused me to know and confirm that men are hurting too. So from that moment on, I decided I would not ever take a platform and only speak about women and abortion, but men. My second book, They Lied to Us Too, T-O-O, -O, plural, is coming out very soon. And I interviewed men over the last several years and they've been able to tell their story. And Joe, at the end of these interviews, they've all said the same thing to me and they don't even know each other. Thank you for finally sharing our story. Wow. Because even though I made her do it, I talked her into it, or I didn't know she was pregnant, drove her there, whatever the case, they tell me, I've kept my mouth shut because the world tells us to keep our mouth shut. And I'm not supposed to say it bothered me too when I realized my job was to protect and I failed. 
Victoria, if somebody's watching today and you go all over the country speaking on pro-life, and I know you've heard some heartbreaking at the same time, some incredible stories. If somebody's in that dilemma you were 20 years ago this morning and they're confused, what's the first step they should do? The first step they should do is find someone that truly cares about them, that they trust, and just take a deep breath. I would say take a deep breath. And if you're the person they come to, you take one too. And we don't need to react. There are local pregnancy resource centers across this country that are doing an incredible job, Joe, of helping people that are in the situation I was in over 30 years ago. So I wish I'd known about them because if that had been the first phone call I had made, they would have invited me in. They would have talked about my options. They would have probably showed me an ultrasound, which would have proven I wasn't carrying a blob of tissue, but a baby. And my life could have been different. So I would say, calm, stay calm. It's going to be okay. And abortion is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And there are so many resources to help you. So get in touch with me. I, I promise to help you find the resources you need. You go all over the country talking on, on pro-life with all of this. And it, 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 will you always, I mean, this will always be your passion? I think no, I don't think I know till the day I'm dead that I, I don't know how I can keep my mouth shut, Joe, because first of all, the abortion industry is a multi-billion dollar business that is preying and manipulating on women in the most vulnerable time of their life. They need to know the truth that there are other options before making that choice. The, the second thing is that the after abortion recovery is so important to those millions upon millions of men and women who are sitting in churches every week and they don't know where to go because most pastors aren't even talking about this issue. So I challenge churches and pastors all the time. If you're not talking about it, your um, parishioners that are sitting in church who have had abortions when one in three people has had an abortion, they're thinking if my own pastor won't discuss it, that's how bad it is that God can't forgive me. This is the one sin. And that's simply not true. So people need to know there is freedom and there is healing after you choose abortion. So no, nope, I don't think anyone will ever be able to shut me up. Even all the trolls and the, <laughs> and the meanies and the, and the cotton headed ninny muggins out there, Joe, <laughs> they're not, they're not going to be able to keep me quiet. Uh, well, keep fighting the good fight, Victoria. I, again, I, I love passionate people, and what you're doing is passionate. Uh, when's your book going to be out, the new book? Uh, it's in its right now. It's gone to print, so I'm just waiting for the copies to come. It'll probably be, we're pushing for the end of the year, but no later than January, so I'm pretty excited about that. Good. We'll have you back on to talk about the book when that comes out. Victoria, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Big Joe. Wish All we right, were we'll talking see. about dogs and stuff. <laughs> Next time we will. Next time we'll do that. All right. All right. Thank you, Victoria Robinson, the founder of Reassemble, and she's on a mission. You heard her passion right there, uh, and she's such a great follow on social media.